Welcome to day two of factoring. Day one we did factor by grouping, which was uh, when we had four terms. Today we're going to do a little bit of factoring with trinomials, and specifically we are going to work on splitting the middle term and factor by grouping. As always, when factoring, always do these pre-steps first, which is one, write the terms in descending order, and then two, make sure your lead coefficient is positive. Our next step is going to be to factor out the greatest common factor. I'll give you an example of that. Let's say that we had the trinomial, that means three terms, of negative 7x squared minus 14x plus 21. The first step is to factor out the greatest common factor. The GCF in this case is negative 7, leaving us with x squared plus 2x plus 3. And you would proceed from that using one of these other factoring methods for trinomials. But always start out to see if there is a GCF. We're going to jump down to splitting the middle term and factoring by grouping. When splitting the middle term and factoring by grouping, we can't forget the pre-steps, which is to 1, write the terms in descending order with respect to the exponents. So this one is a 2, it should be first. This is to the first power, it should be next. This one has x to the 0, it should be last. So I'll do that first. And then the next step, we want to make sure two things. We want to make sure that the lead coefficient is positive. Currently it's not. And two, we want to factor out the greatest common factor if it's anything other than 1. So we can do both of those things on this next step. The GCF of this problem is a negative 3. So if I factor a negative 3 out, that's going to leave me with 9, pardon me, 3x squared minus 22x, make that plus 22x, minus 7. Now at this point, we're going to split the middle term and factor by grouping. I guess before we actually do splitting the middle term, let's discuss why we want to split the middle term. Yesterday we learned how to factor by grouping, and to group, you had to have an even number of terms. We have an odd number of terms, because so we have 3. So our goal is to make the equation like the equations from factoring by grouping, which is 4 terms. Because we know how to factor if we have 4 terms. So here's what we're going to do. We are going to make a little t-chart off to the right. In this t-chart, we're going to write down things that multiply to get 3x squared times negative 7 and we need two things that add to get 22x. Now, Where do those two things come from? Well, adding to get plus 22x is the middle term, which is here. Multiplying to get 3x squared minus 7, we're multiplying this first term by the last term. That product is 21x squared negative. So we need two numbers that multiply to get negative 21x squared, and the same two numbers add to get 22 x. And I'm sure you've already noticed I made a mistake here. This should be a plus 7 because I factored out a negative 3. So I'm multiplying to get a positive 21x squared. Let's say you're not good at figuring out what these numbers are. Perfectly fine. Start with the number 1. 1x multiplied by 21x is going to multiply to get whatever 7 times 3 is, which is 21x squared. Now, if those two numbers add up to be 22, 1 plus 21 is 22, then those are the two numbers that we're going to be using. If it ended up not being those numbers, then we would go and say, what's the next number that goes into 21 evenly? 2 doesn't. 3 does. So you could have 3x here times 7x. That adds up to be 10x. Once again, we can stop now because we figured out our pair of numbers. So let me write down what we got. We got the negative 3 that we're bringing down. This here is all side work. We got the 3x squared we're bringing down. We got the plus 7 we're bringing down. This middle term of 22x gets split, so it makes two separate terms. One of those terms is plus 1x. The other one is a plus 21x. It's extremely important. This is the most pivotal part of this problem, I think. This here needs to be a plus sign. If this was a negative 21x, we would write plus a negative 21x. 
Once you have four terms, do the same thing that you did in the assignment from yesterday, factor by grouping. We're going to group terms together that have common factors. We're going to group together 3x squared plus x. We're going to group together 21x plus 7. Notice, once again, there's a plus sign between that. It's extremely important. So I'm going to bring down my original GCF of negative 3. I'm going to find the GCF of each group. This group has a GCF of x. If I factor that out, I am left with 3x plus 1. In this next group, the GCF is 7. If I factor that out, what remains is an x, pardon me, a 3x plus 1. At this point, there are two terms inside the brackets. This is one term, this is one term. This first term has factors of x and 3x plus 1. The second term has factors of 7 and 3x plus 1. What is those two terms GCF? What's 3x plus 1? I'm going to continue to bring down my original GCF of negative 3. I'm going to factor out a 3x plus 1 from these two terms, from this one and this one. And what remains is an x plus 7. At this point, there should not be a plus sign between your binomials. It should be multiplying. This is fully factored. Negative 3 times the sum of 3x and 1 and x plus 7. So to sum up, Put the terms in descending order, factor out the GCF, split the middle term. Once you've done that, these next two steps are factoring by grouping, which is what we did yesterday. Let's go to the back and do two more examples. Okay, split the middle term and factor by grouping. This is our second example, third example overall on the back of your notes. First thing we always want to do, we want to write the terms in descending order with respect to the exponents. That's 5x squared plus 19x plus 12. Second thing we want to do, make sure that our leading coefficient is positive, which it is. Third thing, we want to make sure that if there's a GCF of these three terms, that we factor it out. In this case, 1 is the GCF. If it is 1, then we don't do that. Next step is to split the middle term. Here's how that works. First term doesn't change. The last term doesn't change. But the middle term of 19x gets split into two separate terms. When you split those terms, they should add together to be 19x, and they should multiply to be whatever 12 times 5x squared is. Let's make a little table off to the right, figure out what those numbers are. I need two numbers that multiply to get whatever 5x squared times 12 is. I say, need those same two terms to add up to be 19x. Once again, where those came from, I took the first term times the last term, that's this product, and I'm adding to get the middle term. 5 times 12 is 60. So I'm multiplying to get 60x squared, and I'm adding to get 19x. Let's see if we can figure out what this is going to be. Once again, if you're not good at figuring out what these numbers are, there's a method that will work for you every time. Start with the first number that will go into 60x squared, the smallest term, which is an x. x times 60x is going to be 60x squared, which is the same product of 5x squared and 12. If you add 1x and 60x, you get 61x. That doesn't work because it has to add up to be 19. Then we try the next thing after 1. 2 goes into 60 evenly. It goes 30x times. 2x times 30x is 60x squared. 2x plus 30x is 32x. Doesn't work. 3 goes into 60. 20 times. 3x plus 20x is 23x. We're getting closer. Right now we're at 23x. We need to be at 19. 4 also goes into... 60, an even amount of times, it goes 15 times. 4x plus 15x is 19x. That means we have found our magical terms. The middle term of 19x gets split into, into 4x and 15x. So we got 5x squared plus 4x plus 15x. 
the middle term, which was 19x, is split into two separate terms. It does not matter the order in which you write them. If someone else had written 15x plus 4x, the end result is going to be the same answer. Once you've split the middle term, which is what we've just done, you then factor by grouping. To factor by grouping, you group the first two terms together, and you group the last two terms together. It's extremely important that the sign between those groups is a plus sign. Once you have grouped them together, you find the GCF of each group. GCF of this first group is x, which leaves me with 5x plus 4. GCF of the second group is a 3, which leaves me with 5x plus 4. Not coincidentally, what's in the parentheses is the same. That will always happen if you've done this correctly. Looking at the first term and the second term, they each have a common factor of a 5x plus 4. That's the GCF of those two terms. So I'm going to bring down my equal sign, factor out the GCF of 5x plus 4. What remains? What remains is an x plus a 3. So this is being multiplied by x plus 3. This is fully factored, factored into 5x plus 4 and x plus 3. Let's do another example of factoring in which we are going to split the middle term and then factor by grouping. First thing we want to do is make sure our terms are in descending order with respect to the exponents. 2, and then 1, and then 0. So that's done. Second thing, we would like the lead coefficient to be positive. Well, it doesn't have to happen technically, but I think you're going to be more successful if you do. Also, if there's a GCF, also factor that out at this point, there is a GCF of 4. It's going to leave me with 4x squared plus 15x minus 25 divided each term by negative 4. It changes all the signs and then all the numbers get divided by 4. At this point, we're going to continue to bring down the negative 4 in the brackets. The 4x squared is our first term and the minus 25 is our last term. We'd like to factor by grouping because we know how to do that. So this middle term of 15x is going to get split into two separate terms. To determine how that gets split, we're going to make a little t-chart. For this t-chart, we're going to multiply to get 4x squared times negative 25 and add to get 15x. To figure out that we're multiplying by this, you take the first term times the last term. 4 times negative 25 is negative 100. So we need it to multiply to get a negative 100x squared. Those same two terms add up to be the, the middle term of 15x. Let's make a list and see if we can figure this out. Some things to consider when you're doing this. Since you are multiplying these two things together, a negative times a positive, your answer is going to be negative. That means the two things that you're multiplying together, the two factors, one has to be positive, one has to be negative. When you're adding those same two things, your answer is a positive 15x. That tells us that the bigger of our two terms has to be positive. I'm going to start out once again with negative 1x. That's going to multiply times 100x to give me the same product as 4 times negative 25x squared. So that's a negative 100x squared. If I add those terms though, I get 99x when I need to get 15x. That doesn't work. So then I go to the next biggest integer after negative 1 that goes into 100. Negative 2x goes into 100 goes into it 50x times. If I add those, I get 48x. That combination doesn't work. Then I go to negative 3. But negative 3 does not go into 100 evenly, so I don't use that term. Then I go to negative 4. Negative 4x goes into 100x squared 25x times. If I add those, I get 21x. It's not the same as 15x. Then I go to the next integer after negative 4 that goes into 100, which is negative 5. Negative 5 goes into 100 20 times. Negative 5x times 20, pardon me, plus 20x is 15x. So this is the magical combination. The middle term of 15x gets split into a minus 5x and to an, 
to a plus 20x. So I'm going to write that down. Once again, this middle term, which was 15x, gets split into two equivalent terms, a minus 5x plus 20x. It's extremely important, no matter how you write these terms, that this middle has a plus between them. So if I'd written these the opposite way, where it was 4x squared plus 20x and a minus 5x minus 25, I wouldn't want to leave it that way. I want this middle sign to be plus. So what I could do to make it that way, I could make it plus a negative 5x, which is equivalent to subtracting 5x squared. So as I continue here, I have done the hardest part of the problem. I have split the middle term. At this point, I factored by grouping, just like I did in the previous assignment. To do so, I'm going to group together my first two terms and my last two terms, making sure, once again, that between my parentheses is a plus sign, not a minus. Then I find the GCF of each group. So I'm going to bring down the negative 4, bring down my big brackets. The GCF of this first group is an x, so they factor that out. I am left with a 4x minus 5. The GCF of my next group is a 5, so I factor that out, so I have plus 5, and I am left with 4x minus 5. If this is done correctly, and if it does factor, this binomial will be identical to this binomial. So looking at these two terms in the brackets, they both have a common factor of 4x minus 5. I'm going to continue to bring down the negative 4. If I factor out the 4x minus 5 to the front, what remains for me to those terms is an x plus 5. This is fully factored now and the problem is finished. Please do the assignment, factoring by splitting the middle term, and then factoring by grouping. And um, tomorrow we will do some special rules for factoring of binomials and trinomials.